We've all heard of the heroic captains of the SCRN, but how do the command staff of our Navy's warships really do it? In this episode of How It Works, we take a deep dive into the brain of any good ship, the CIC. While often the most important and famous piece of the CIC, the commanding officer, or CO, is but one cog in the complex system involved in commanding and controlling a warship. The CIC is divided into several sections known as stations. Each station manages a valuable subsystem or function for the ship. Stations include fire control, navigation, comms, damage control, helm, and air traffic control. Each of these stations is managed by the central command section, located in the middle of the CIC. It is at this location that the commander and executive officer may take their station. From this vantage point, the bridge officers may be easily issued commands to carry out by the command staff, who use a large display suspended from the ceiling to take in radar and target information. While the command of a ship cannot go overstated, the subordinate stations below it also play a critical role in the normal and abnormal operations of the vessel. Starting our exploration of these substations is the most important, the helm. What makes a ship a ship is moving. The helm is what facilitates this. Located in an armored box just forward of the main citadel of the CLC is this station. In this box are the primary controls used to maneuver the ship in both sublight speeds and through FTL jumps. The helm is often the most independent station, being free to make evasive maneuvers or quick adjustments to order maneuvers, as well as filling in gaps between major orders issued by the CO. And now if moving puts the ship in warship, this next station puts in the war. The fire control station manages all conventional weapon systems aboard the vessel. It's the job of the weapon systems officer, or WISO for short, to task the numerous weapons batteries of the ship to different targets or roles on the orders of the CO. This adjustment of fire of the weapons allows for more efficient offense and defense for the ship, letting it do more with less. Moving across the bridge, we find ourselves at the damage control station. This terminal is used to monitor all the various ship's system's integrities, as well as to display any damage that might have been taken by the hull of the vessel during combat. This information is incredibly useful. It can be relayed to the commander to possibly necessitate the turning or rolling of the ship after certain armor sections are destroyed, or, critically, can be used to manage and alert damage control teams to repair critical ship systems more rapidly. While internal communications are easy by way of proximity, talking to other ships, friendly or otherwise, necessitates a dedicated communications officer. Nestled in the corner of the CIC behind its own enclosed layer of glass to create a separation from the bustling noise of the rest of the command deck, the comm station provides a valuable verbal link to the outside world, relaying the command staff's diction over several forms of communication. While not located in the primary command center, the air traffic control station is located in the main hangar and is responsible for the coordination of all launch and retrieval operations for fighters, ensuring the safe and quick operation of the flight deck. Finally, the navigation station, which is located in the command pit alongside the command officers and serves to control the FTL systems as well as operating as a backup helm in the unlikelihood that the armored helm is rendered inoperable. Hopefully you now have a better understanding and appreciation for the operations of a ship's command system and may be better informed for both service and design, as well as more knowledgeable on the daily tasks carried out by our servicemen and women in protection of the Republic. As always, this has been How It Works. Fly safe out there, and remember to stay tuned for more detailed breakdowns.